welcome to my talk. So maybe it's a bit exotic, so we, we already heard from Google today something about machine learning. It was quite technical, so um, maybe I have to disappoint some of you, so there will be no formulas or no code today. It will just be more or less the business point of view, or let's call it a culture. Okay, so just a word uh, from myself. So I, I didn't took this picture. I mean, I took it, but it's, it's on the company presentation, so I'm kind of the role model for our data scientists, so it's, it's pure luck that, that it's me over here. So Blue Yonder is a company, the headquarters is in Karlsruhe in Germany. We are doing data-driven software as a service solutions for the retail industry, so mostly it's replenishment, so ordering stuff for supermarkets, and uh, pricing, dynamic pricing, so doing, uh, yeah, setting new prices on online shops or even in stores. Uh, we are doing this data science stuff since over 10 years, so way before even the, the word was coined, so we were not data scientists before. So for me, I'm at Blue Yonder since five years, um, so when I started I was data analyst, so now I'm data scientist. Okay, yeah, that's not so important. So um, if someone is interested, I also have a blog post on our techblueyonder.com uh, page and most of the ideas from this uh, blog, uh, from this talk uh, are somehow wrapped up in this blog post. So if you're interested, just, just search for data science and DevOps and it will be on the first page somewhere. So what do we, we want to do today? First I introduce you to what is data science after all, uh, why is it so important, then to the title, troublemaker, why is it seemingly so hard to integrate? And then, yeah, we will see some light at the tunnel. Uh, we will see some ways to successfully integrate data science. Okay, so what is data science? There is this famous tweet from uh, Big Data Borat, and he says, it's easy, data science is statistics on a Mac. So, if we go back, maybe it's right. Uh, I have a Mac there. Uh, yeah but of course it's more or less a joke. Uh, the next one is also a bit like a joke, but it's really to the point, uh, maybe it's, it's, really, it's even surprising how good it is. So a data scientist is a person who is better at statistics than any software engineer, and better at software engineering than any statistician. So maybe that's a really good uh, explanation what data science is all about. And why? We come to that in a second. So I have my own definition. If you want to use it, you can use it. Just put my name in the tweet and then you can use it. So my definition is, data science aims to build systems that support and automate data-driven operational decisions. Wow. So quite some words in there that many people do not really associate with data science. So for example, this operational decisions. What is it, what, what is it after all? So, Let's look at some examples. So we, took the ex we take the examples from our company. For example, we want to know what is the optimal price for those clementines today? What is it tomorrow? Is 299 really the best price or maybe 298? That's a de decision you have to take. You have to write the price uh, afterwards on this price tag. The next thing, how many apples should we order for the next week? So that's a decision. You have to call your supplier and say, I need eight tons of apples. Okay, that's it. So now we know what, what data science is. We really need to take action afterwards, but we, but we take data into account to come to these decisions. But why is it so important? So all the press, everything is full with data science. Maybe you found out that in the last year, somehow the word AI came up. So I would say it's just a synonym, so most people now exchange data science with uh, AI. Still the question is the same, AI is just a thing if you do decisions afterwards with this, so really actions. Okay, why is it so important? And I have some uh, things brought up. I'm not a I'm not a real expert, so if you find something wrong, then just keep it for you, don't tell anyone. Okay, so these are just my ideas. So 
operational decisions done by humans are suboptimal. And I can show you um, uh, that's true, because if you go to Wikipedia and search for cognitive biases, for example, cognitive bias for human decision making, there is a list of over 150 known, really statistically proven biases where our brain really does bad things. So I just uh, picked three random examples here. For example, there's the known bandwagon effect. Uh, it says that uh, there is a tendency to do things because many other people do the same. So I was in a meetup and those two companies have a Hadoop cluster. I think Hadoop is really the thing to go without even uh, checking if it's true. Confirmation bias, the tendency to focus on information in a way that confirms one's preconception. That's, for example, a thing really happens. If the, the one who does the ordering, it, it really happens that you say, I know every Monday we need more apples. Look here, ah, no, ah, look here, no, ah, here, there were more apples. So you skip all those information which doesn't really fit into your brain, and that's really bad. The last one, of course, it's a killer, neglect of probability, the tendency to completely disregard probability when making a decision under uncertainty. So this is really a bad thing, but this happens all the time. Think of people having fear from flying in an airplane, but have no problems uh, going into a car. But of course, the probability to die in a car is way higher, 100 times higher or something. So it's completely... So this is really bad. The other thing, um, humans are lazy, we all know this, but it's, it's also a good thing, so we need to sleep, we cannot be so exhausted. Um, but uh, each and every decision for a company needs to be optimal. And not making a decision at all, so just saying, okay, I think the price of last week was good enough, so this is not making a decision, that is suboptimal. And also, of course, simplifying a decision, so maybe, uh, I can neglect everything, uh, it's also suboptimal. Um, the other thing is, even if it was okay for the last years to do those decisions in a suboptimal way, it's not possible anymore because we have higher, um, we have uh, increased uh, competition, so competition gets global, we have transparency, you can have, you can sort out all the prices of all televisions from Samsung in just one click. So uh, if you summarize this, for example, for German retailers, so really supermarkets, they now are at a point, so it's here, it's a number, I don't know from when it is, so it's roughly 1% margin. So from every euro you spend in Germany in a supermarket, just one cent keeps uh, with, the, with the supermarket. Um, so that's really bad. So if they screw up their decisions, they drop out of the market, that's clear. And if it's not today, it will be next year. Amazon Fresh, everyone heard of it, will be a killer. So, and this brings it to the point why is data science so important. It can, ex ex it can solve exactly these problems. So, we can make optimal decisions unbiased. We don't have those human biases anymore. We can take all information into account. We can do really complex computations. Um, and also automation enables that we really can optimize all the decisions and not just a subset. So we can do it as often as needed, maybe even re real time or daily or weekly or whatever is needed. Um, as granular, so really for each product, not just, okay, let's buy more apples, but maybe there's a sort of apples which is uh, sold more and the other ones a bit less. And we actually can do those uh, decisions like, uh, okay, I set a price last week, but today I set a new price. Now to the point of the whole uh, talk, troublemaker, okay, data science seems to be great, we can really do optimal decisions in every granularity. Um, why is it then so hard to integrate? So, and this could be a conversation you can try this evening on the rooftop party, so you just ask some ran random guys in your company, are you already doing this data science stuff, or maybe AI, or big data, or whatever? And 
as at least I heard quite often, or we see it from our customers, yeah, we have such a data science team uh, since a year or maybe since five years, but the progress is really slow, so we don't see really new fancy things coming up. So why is this? And this I want to show here. So sorry, I, I googled a lot, like two hours, but I haven't found a picture, so I had to uh, draw it myself. So yeah, doesn't look that good, but it's okay for our purposes. So um, first we start, so this is then in the end, this is the whole decision-making process, automation. So this is a robot doing, or doing decisions. So we have all kinds of input data sources, let's say some enterprise resource planning, ERP, that might be a SAP system or Oracle, point of sale, some cashiers on, uh, in a supermarket, um, or some credit card paid somewhere, maybe customer, customer relations, so accounts from different customers, maybe data from the online shop, so where did the customer click, uh, or other stuff like weather or holidays or things like this. So we all put this together in, a, in one step, which is called ETL here, so extract, transform, load. Um, whatever it is, um, we, we need to wrap all this data, these sources together and come up with one table because in principle, the whole machine learning thing, in the end, you need one table. So really just some columns and many rows. This then goes into this machine learning blob, um, and what comes out are decisions, so actions, orders, prices, things like this. Sometimes uh, also just forecasts, or maybe some support for decisions, maybe some hints what might be better. But this then has to go back, and even here you see, so it's the same thing. So maybe the whole deci decision thing needs to go back into my SAP system. So, and then you already see, okay, Data science for decision making is deeply integrated into the business process. So it's at the core of the business. It's not something you can have somewhere else. Maybe 20 years ago, it was okay to have a home page, just a home page for a company like, I don't know, maybe Mercedes Benz. So you could just have some people doing a home page, read only, no interaction, and that was okay. Um, this is not a case here, so it needs to be deeply integrated into the business. It is at the core. And the trouble on the input side, so when we pull all this data together, so there are many, many problems occurring. For example, data availability, the, dates, the data needs to be available in machine-readable form. Um, we need to have it as real-time because, yeah, we want to predict the future, so if it's uh, two years old data, it's near to worthless, so we really need it as, uh, yeah, as real-time as possible. Also, data quality, this is uh, a big issue. Many old traditional systems have aggregated data, like, for example, weekly data, but if you want to do daily predictions, your weekly data is just, um, it's, it's worthless, so you need it as raw as possible, maybe even receipt lines from, from your cashier, from your point of sales thing, and it gets quite a huge amount of data. Um, also, data quality, so it happens to me sometimes, I'm at a supermarket and I have a box of beer and a box of Coke, and the cashier says, just give me the beer, they are the same price. So a normal laceman would normally say, okay, that's pragmatic, I get tears in my eyes because I say, come on, this poor data scientist afterwards, he has to deal with negative sales because I know this was the last Coke. So, okay, on the output side, it's the same. What we produce there, and we see some numbers on the next slides, it can be a huge amount of decisions. Um, we need to validate it somehow. It's really a decision made previously by humans now do we need some monitoring, alerting, maybe even a human approval? I mean, it's the price of this TV in this online shop. If it's minus 10 euro, it's really a bad thing. Um, yeah, and also, if, it's, if, if it should be really effective, these decisions need to trigger real actions in the real world. So, for example, if you want to set 
three times a day in your supermarket the price. Maybe it's not a good idea to do it three times a day. But, for example, you would need some digital price tags, which then can update it via wireless uh, network somehow. Or you need uh, an automated ordering process. So this all applies to, to everything. I just for an, I take as an example the retail industry here. But, of course, it's the same for every business in the world, for banks and, and so on. Um, this is also a big problem. What you st we, we saw that all those arrows go, to, go into a single point. So what we do here is we increase the coherence and entanglement uh, because from all those different departments, we now need the data. So we need to agree on some common IDs maybe, some common types. We need to synchronize, not if one is collecting and sending the data on the first of the month, the other one on the last of the month. So we need to somehow uh, agree on, on a, yeah, like a clockwork. Uh, and, and also the teams at, at this point where this data goes into an automated decision machine, um, you cannot change your data structures anymore because there's this machine depending on you. Humans are really good to, to then say, okay, the column was previously named X, now it's Y, okay, it's okay. Uh, a machine will, boom, explode. Then this is uh, the last problem. Data science is greedy by nature. So this is maybe a sentence. Um, uh, yeah, so. The current database should be sufficiently sized for the next year. This is exactly what no data scientist will ever tell you anytime, anywhere. That will not happen. So why is data science so greedy? Because they are right. In general, data science, so such a data science machine, the, the outcome gets better if you have more features. This is more columns in your table. If you have more historic data, these are the rows, so it's three years of history or maybe 10 years of history and more independent data sources, for example, weather or stock exchange, Twitter streams, whatever. So in, in general, uh, and also the, the complexity of the algorithm. So when you read all these things about deep learning, it's really so you can burn quite some, uh, some electricity with, uh, with those kinds of algorithms. Um, so and that's, in general, the case. So it will be better, so don't blame the data scientists, so not the persons are greedy, but the problem in itself, it's, it's, it's just greedy. You, if you put in more, you get more out. Um, as an example, um, so let's take a small supermarket, it's really a small one, so 100 stores, 5,000 products, three years of history, and maybe 50 of those columns, so some sales, product details, weather data. So it's really not, not a big problem, but immediately you end up with 500 million rows and 200 gigabyte of uncompressed data. So it's really just a calculation. Okay, this mat matrix, if you want to put it in RAM, you need a big, big machine. And this is a small store. So imagine there's, there's 2,000 stores. Um, this was for the training. So if you want to do those predictions in a daily, daily um, manner, also 100 stores, 5,000 5, products, but we need at least 14 individual forecasts for the next days for a good replenishment algorithm because we need to know, okay, how much will be sold tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, uh, and this explodes also immediately. So this will be uh, 7 million predictions every day, and with a if your SAP system is able to ingest 1,000 writes per second, and that's even not slow, um, that would be quite good. Uh, it takes two hours to book it, just, just the raw numbers back into your system. And it's a small supermarket, so nothing fancy here. And this is easily forgotten. So, um, I don't know, how's the time? It's good. Um, okay, but I, but I think... Um, uh, the beer is waiting, so if, if, if time is running up, what we normally do, we skip the security issues. <laughs> uh, and go directly into uh, the, the resilience and failure problems. So what happens if there is no decision made due to a failure of this decision machine? Is your business going down? My easy answer, yes, your business will go down. 
It is so deeply integrated, so there will be no orders for the, for the supermarket. So shelves will be empty. That will be a huge thing. You need to invest heavily in measures against, so you need to be resilient against failure in your, in your decision-making system. In previous times, you could just fire the person who forgot to, to order. This is not possible anymore. You can fire those, those poor guys who had to develop the thing. But who could know that there are negative stocks? Uh, that happens. Okay, so finished, there is big trouble. Who, who agrees there's big trouble with data science? Just one, okay. Okay. Nonetheless, I will show you <laughs> that there is a way to successfully integrate data science. Um, namely, and I, I, I think everyone guessed already, uh, we heard several talks about this DevOps uh, thing. So that's, that's exactly the only solution I know there is to successfully overcome all those troubles. It is the DevOps thing. Who here has some clue what DevOps is? Or who doesn't know what DevOps is at all? Nobody. So everyone knows what DevOps is. Okay, so maybe just a, a small wrap up. The idea is uh, instead of having a separated silo of uh, developers and operation uh, uh, department, uh, who are differently, who have different uh, goals. For example, developers need to produce more features. Operations want to have stable operations, so no new features. Um, you need to align those departments into a common goal. And the common goal is something like the value we deliver to the customer. And every single department needs to align in this row. So it doesn't matter if there are new features, if the system is unstable, because then we deliver no value. It doesn't, it doesn't mean a thing if the, if the system is stable, if there are new, no new features, because it's also no value for the customer. So they both need to have, be incentivized to have uh, the maximum value for the, for the customer. And that's exactly the same. We just, we just ex exchanged those, those words. So maybe it was even a bad idea to call it DevOps because it looked like it's only about developers and, and operations. But we saw already today in some talk this biz De DevOps, so also business needs to align. Sales needs to be aligned. Um, marketing needs to be aligned into exactly this value stream. And now, of course, also these data science efforts need to be aligned call it AI or big data or whatever, this needs to be done. Otherwise, it will fail exactly for the same reasons as it fails for developers and operations. So, the first thing would be, no, so I would say the first thing would be, we also saw it already today in the talk, um, every business is a software business. So this is, of course, the first thing. So if a company doesn't accept uh, that maybe it is a software company. We could stop talking here because they can try to do data science or whatever. Every company is a software company. And it happens that some of them produce planes or cars or have some supermarkets uh, somewhere um, or, do, uh, um, or do sell uh, bank accounts. Um, yeah, so this said, then you need to accept the data science data science is part of this value stream, so you need to align it. What does it help for customer value? If you don't find anything which helps to deliver value to the customer, just stop there. It will be just a waste of, of money. Um, yeah, and in return, also these data science efforts uh, should strongly on the added value. So, for example, evaluate the cost and compare it to the added value. Data science is not just a self-service, uh, a self-purpose. This is often, it is often lived like this. So one can say, ah, we have a date. Yeah, we are doing this data science stuff, but that's that's nonsense. It's 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 only relevant if if it adds to the value we deliver to the customer. So a siloed data science team will not work out never. So who here is in a company with a with a data science team and they are in a some separate room? You can go home to your manager and say, Sebastian said this will not work out, and I'm right. I, I can promise you. Um, yeah, so 
also just adding this thing like a balcony somewhere and don't change the rest of the whole company will also not work out. You need to change your whole company to be able to work out with these new non-human decisions. It's a complete new way of thinking. There are no people anymore who are, who are uh, responsible for these decisions. It's machines doing these decisions. It's like robots in, 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 a, um, in a manufacturing um, line, assembly line. It's really a new thing. Um, that also means so you have to apply the same quality standards. These, if these things fail, your business will go down. So don't accept any data scientist deliver anything with no tests. It's just, it's just nonsense. It, it will not work out. It's the same thing than for any other software in the company. So, um, yeah. So I repeat this in every single of my talks. Uh, no matter what topic it is, because that's the rule number one. It's just there. So keep it simple, stupid, or you can, or, or keep it simple, stupid. Or however you pronounce it, it's just like this. So if you try to do a really massive new thing, it will fail. Yeah. Um, maybe this is the most important slide. Um, so if you take this home, maybe my my job is done. So who here knows Occam's razor? One, two, are you, are you a data scientist? No, okay. So uh, the, the original one, or the, there are many, uh, many different ones, but uh, I took this from Wikipedia. So among competing hypotheses, the one with the fewest assumptions should be selected. And I translated it um, so that we can make sense of it. If the outcome of two data science models are compatible, and compatible means maybe inside the errors or acceptable, so it doesn't mean to be equal, but really, yeah, more or less comparable, then take the one with the smaller resource fo footprint. So if you have data scientists somewhere in your, in your um, company, this has to be printed on the wall, and they really need to lift this, because otherwise data science is greedy. It's easily possible that they will eat up on an AWS millions of millions of euros. It's, it's easily possible, no, no doubt about that. If, and in the end, you gain something like 1% and this is eaten up by some rounding uh, because you cannot uh, order small boxes, you have to order a whole uh, package. So then, in the end, the result in euros is exactly the same, but you've eaten up millions of euros. Then you have to point to this one. Do you know Occam's razor? Now you know it, and this is the most important slide. Um, this is the answer to the security issue, so we skipped it before, so we skip it now. Um, digitalization, this is the same thing. Software eats the world. Um, get human interaction out of the loop. PDF send around is not anymore if it's needed in these decision algorithms. If some managers need weekly reports, fine, and they want to read PDFs, fine, but if it's information which has, which has, to, go down, uh, da, which has, has to go into the automation system, it's not possible anymore. Think of uh, things like sensors, RFID, maybe that the, the stock level is automatically um, somehow uh, yeah, managed in a, in a system, the, the whole IoT stuff. So maybe you can have some sensors which looks, is, is, there, is there something new in the shelf or is it going out? Just try to remove every human interaction in, the, in, the, in between. Uh, also streamline the data handling. I mean, yeah, software is about APIs, so really think of how can we communicate our data better define APIs, how to exchange data in the future, um, also some common data formats and interfaces, things like this. Um, yeah, so I've written quite something here, but maybe the, the only thing I want to point out here is, yes, you have to modernize uh, your IT infrastructure, but not by just buying a new Hadoop stack or something. That's, that's meaningless. Uh, that can figure out uh, some people who know what, what they should do. Um, the only thing which counts here is 
are you able to, 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 uh, to perform cheap experiments if there is added value for the customer or not? So this needs to be the, the, the goal for, for the modernization of your IT infrastructure. So is the data scientist easily able in one week try out a new model and test if it's maybe saving some 20,000 euros per month? Or maybe not. Um, okay, last slide. Uh, this is, this is the, the step through roadmap. So if you follow these steps, you will have a successful integration of your data science effort. If you follow not, maybe you have a good integration. So start by defining the problem. Which decision should be automated and improved? So if the decision you want to automate is already perfect, don't do it. If someone just says, oh, we need this AI thing, everyone doing, is doing this AI thing, then you say, it's the bandwagon effect, we don't need it. Um, yeah. Then embed these data scientists into a cross-functional -fun team, which is building this decision-making system. So really, it's a new product. It's a product embedded in the, in the business. So this, uh, this team needs some uh, database, uh, some uh, operations folks, full stack. They need to be able to provide the service as it is. Then start with a minimal viable product. This is the keep it simple, stupid uh, uh, number one rule. It will not work out if you try to build a three-year thing and then after three years you find out that those decisions are not needed anymore. So start simple and then measure and extrapolate the impact of this delivered improved decisions. So start with a small project, measure, ah, okay, so it's 3% up. If we, if we extrapolate, that makes up 20,000 euro per month or maybe $15 per month. So that's the difference. Then if you have this freed, this saved money, just define out of this freed money what is the acceptable cost that we can, that we, that we can do. I mean, it doesn't mean to be that it's equal. Maybe you want to have that the costs are much lower than the, the, the improvement you gained. That's up to you. That's, that's your management decision, but you have to do it. So it's easily possible that the, that the costs, um, which are just eaten up by the data science um, thingy, is way beyond what you ever will uh, save, save for money. And then if you first, if, if you did this first iteration, then continue, improve, measure the whole cycle as everyone knows. Yeah, so that's it. Here's my summary. Again, data science aims to automate operational decisions. So this you take home. Data science has a big and growing potential. Yeah, Amazon is coming, all the others are coming, margins going down. Okay, we need it. Uh, human biases. Data science is greedy by nature. Yes, it is resource intensive by nature and is not wrong. It's correct. Um, it increases the entanglement. You need to um, yeah, pull all information from all departments together. But data science efforts need to be part of the value stream in order to, um, to be effective. So align it with the company goals, which is normally something like the value we provide to our customers, and compare the cost with the actual improvements. So that's it. Thank you. And I think the beer is waiting. Beer is waiting, but before that, are there any questions for Sebastian? No question, that's not true. Be, be bold. According with the data science, did you expect any question now, or what the data science says? What? Sorry. What the data science says? Did you expect any question now or not? What is data science? <laughs> ah. 
No, because I already answered all the questions when I prepared this talk, of, of course. So I, I predicted uh, all the questions. Okay, fine for me. So if there are no questions, I will be around at the rooftop party, but I, I think there is no rooftop party. It is downstairs or is it at the rooftop? I don't know. We, we will close downstairs now uh, um, because of the winner of the escape room. So, um, and yeah. after that, the announcements will be uh, over there. So, but I'll be uh, around, so just come and ask your questions. Yeah. So, thank you very much, Sebastian.